Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Glue Stick channel. I make videos about Dungeons and Dragons lore full time so that you don't have to. Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? Have you or your family ever seen a spook, spectre or ghost? If the answer is yes, and you believe a powerful summoner has reason to want you dead, then don't wait another minute. Visit your local arcane professionals and ask about preventative abjuration and warding, as you may be the target of an invisible stalker. The invisible stalker! has appeared in every edition of the game apart from 4th edition, right from the very first Dungeons and Dragons set uh, published in 1974, including the sky blue covered expert set for D&D basic system. I had the 1983 printing with the Larry Elmore art on the cover, one of my favourite bits of artwork from the game. As the name suggests, invisible stalkers are not visible. However, we actually know what they look like. Uh, because they do have the power to make themselves visible if they choose to do so. This is such a vanishingly rare occurrence that most people think it's just an outlandish rumour, but in the Endless Quest series, in a book titled Return to Brookmere, there is exactly uh, that occurrence. That's what happened when an invisible stalker named Mazars... Wait a minute, I just realised that Mazars is backwards Shazam. <laughs> nice, topical. Mazars revealed itself to be a solid-bodied solid humanoid creature with two arms, four spindly legs like that of an ant, pointed ears and a large nose, wearing earrings and a curly pointed cap. Here I have a mock-up of my impression of what that revealed form would look like. The, this may have been a complete fabrication though, with the Invisible Stalker projecting an image an illusionary, illusionary image of its own uh, self for its amusement. Invisible stalkers are not, by nature, malevolent beings. They would rather have absolutely nothing to do with the prime material plane and simply exist in their home, the elemental plane of air, as what we corporeal beings consider to be an energy essence. The elemental planes have incredibly rich, diverse ecosystems with all manner of unique forms of life, covering the complete array of complexity from something the equivalent to a simple organism which we would consider to be a bacteria and algae uh, to krill and plants to insects to fish all the way up to fully sentient cultured beings with their own societies rich histories and internal conflicts politics and day-to-day -day concerns completely divorced from creatures from the material plane in fact their their form of life um, dictates that their environment is totally different their form their physical manifestations of themselves is nothing um, like the energy form of themselves they're completely alien to us and we're completely alien to them the intrusions of solid matter into the elemental plane of air are not that rare nor do the air elemental seem to mind too much but they certainly do not like being bound to the thin shell of atmosphere around a planet in the prime material plane they are suddenly trapped in a sparse desert almost devoid of elemental life, restricted by ground below and void above, the air a filthy mix of gases given up by organic beings. And it's not a pleasant environment for them, and the invisible stalker, while on the material plane, is not having a good time. They are summoned to the prime material plane by spellcasters who know the exact method of calling them and binding them to their service. The stalkers were never that hostile towards creatures of the prime material until they started to get summoned and bound so frequently so that now they are quite hostile and have been known to attack prime material beings who visit the, their home plane uh, just because they so greatly resent the abuse they have suffered uh, completely unjustifiably at the hands of arrogant and abusive prime material mages. They are composed entirely of air, solidified in microcurrents of tremendous power. Unlike the swirling whirlwind forms of other elemental beings, the stalkers are extremely hard to detect as their energy is tightly contained, silent and seemingly still, even when right next to them. They can be barely felt as a mild disturbance to within a fraction of an inch of themselves. This of course makes them the perfect stealth assassins and thieves, which is exactly what they are summoned to the prime material plane for. They can be compelled to seek out and kill a being, or to retrieve an object. They cannot be compelled to reveal any information or reveal themselves. Also, they may be okay with being summoned to kill a close by target or steal an object with few obstacles in the way, but if they have to travel a long distance to do it, or they, are, they face significant delays and difficulties, they may become extremely resentful and seek a way to subvert or circumvent the intent of those commands while still compelled to obey the exact wording of them. This is the classic case of the nefarious genie granting a wish that turns out to be a bit of a nightmare. As a rule, 
they there are warnings within the pages of arcane rituals about this sort of thing and most spellcasters with a lick of sense will be careful not to summon invisible stalkers unless it is specifically for assassination or abduction and only if the task can be performed quickly by the entity traditionally they only speak Orin, the language of air elemental creatures they do understand common and can learn to speak it they do as they're commanded by the individual who summoned them if the individual uh command involves retrieving information they will do that including acting as a spy or an observer otherwise they will not just give away information but it must always be part of their orders if commanded to do something that is not related to hunting down a target slaying a specific creature or recovering an object the magic that created the invisible stalker ends and the elemental is released in the puff of wind to go back to the elemental plane of existence Otherwise, it completes the task and then returns to its summoner for more commands, forced to serve that magician and, and the magic that binds it until it expires or the magician who summoned them, summoned them is killed. They can certainly be killed on their home elemental plane, but when damaged enough to kill them on the prime material plane, they just dissipate and return immediately to the elemental plane of air, relatively weak and very perturbed by the entire ordeal. In 5th edition, Invisible stalkers remain true to form. They are naturally invisible elemental beings who require no air, food, water, or sleep. They remain invisible even when they attack. Even uh, magic used to see the invisible will merely show a vague, somewhat amorphous outline that looks to be vaguely humanoid, medium-sized. They can have fun with this effect to reveal um, what they really look like. The lightning strike might give off a charged momentary outline of their humanoid body shape. They may displace a body of water when they're traveling through the water to get to a target or travel through an area and look like a vaguely humanoid bubble that surges through the water. They are very fast with a ground and air speed of 50 feet per round without any effort to dash. They naturally hover and leave no trace of footprints on the ground, nor do they disturb the environment overly much, which makes them extremely difficult to track. When they're traveling through a forest, for instance, they don't snap twigs or bend branches or anything. They are, on the other hand, faultless trackers the stalker always knows the direction and distance to its quarry as long as the two of them are on the same plane of existence the stalker also knows the location of its summoner they may well you well you may want to add a slight caveat here the stalker knows the location of any being or object that is in contact in any way with even one particle of air so they may not be able to track a warforged at the bottom of the ocean if you want to limit them in some small way for your campaign. That's how I would do it. Though I should point out that's not official. Um, that would be homebrew or improvised rules for a specific campaign. They have an armor class of 14, 68, uh, 16d8 plus 32 hit points, which gives a range between 48 and 160 hit points. An average invisible stalker has 104 they are further toughened by being immune to poison and resistant, so taking half damage, from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. They are also totally immune to be becoming exhausted, getting grappled, becoming paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, getting restrained, or knocked unconscious. So pretty tough cookies, really. Add to that, they are extremely stealthy, with a plus eight, uh, sorry, a plus ten to their stealth skill rolls and plus eight to their perception checks. 60 foot night uh, dark vision and passive perception of 18 which means a character has to get 18 or higher on their stealth check to avoid being automatically detected by the invisible stalker. They attack by making slamming impacts and terrible wrenching twists with their tightly compressed air form. With a plus 6 to hit they can make 2 slam attacks each round doing 2d6 plus 3 bludgeoning damage which is usually sufficient to kill an ordinary non-heroic non-player character such as the human mayor of a town, some rival mage and so forth. If the stalker faces significant and threatening resistance they are intelligent and more than wise enough to back off and find better methods of achieving their compulsory mission. They have a strength of 16, a dexterity of 19 and a constitution of 14. They're not actually incorporeal or it's not specifically stated that they are so they can certainly pick up objects, move things, slam doors, break down doors, trip people over, throw them off a cliff, drop uh, them drop them, um, or heavy drop heavy objects on them and so on. They have an average intelligence of 10, a high wisdom score of 15, representing their uh, superior senses, and a charisma of 11, 
With a challenge rating of 6, they are designed to be encountered alone against a group of characters. If a cabal of mages acting together are using multiple invisible stalkers, the encounter with them can quickly become very deadly, so I advise you set certain conditions into the encounter, such as the stalkers all leaving as soon as one of the party members is reduced to 0 hit points, as they were only specifically instructed to, and I quote, kill those four adventurers. Once there are less than four, the stalkers have technically completed their mission. Like, subscribe, check out my Patreon for exclusive content and all the full scripts for these videos. Buy some merchandise, wear your geek with pride. Check out Patron Blades for a mighty smooth shave. And as always, thanks for listening. And I'll be back with more for you very soon.